This view illustrates the spread of the subprime mortgage crisis, which touched off the global financial crisis of 2008. Subprime mortgage loans are made to people who wouldn't qualify for an ordinary loan. Because the default rate is higher for people in this risk group, banks charge more for subprime loans. This means that the people who can't qualify for an ordinary home loan end up paying more for their home mortgage. In recent years, financial instruments based on groups of mortgages have been created and sold to other financial institutions to spread risk and manage short and long-term cash flow. In 2005 and 2006, the collapse of the U.S. housing bubble and rising interest rates increased the mortgage default rates in late 2006. In 2007, home loan foreclosures passed 1.2 million, up 79% from the previous year. In February and March of 2007, more than 25 subprime lenders either declared bankruptcy, announced significant losses, or put themselves up for sale. On April 2, 2007, New Century Financial, the largest U.S. subprime lender, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. On April 24, the National Association of Realtors announced that sales of existing homes fell 8.4% in March from February, the sharpest month-to-month -month drop in 18 years. On April 30, 2007, Moody's downgraded the ratings on 27 different pools of securities created over the past two years by Lehman Brothers Holdings, citing more subprime mortgage losses than forecast. On August 10, 2007, there was a run on Countrywide Bank, the largest mortgage holder in the U.S. Several days after this, the stock experienced the largest drops in its history. During late 2007, Citigroup continued to hold large positions of CDOs, a type of mortgage-backed security. This practice was approved by their internal risk assessors, but investors apparently disagreed and the stock plummeted. December 31, 2007, National City announced that their wholesale mortgage division would cease operations in the face of record foreclosures. On March 14, 2008, J.P. Morgan Chase, in conjunction with the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, provided a 28-day emergency loan to Bear Stearns in hopes of averting a market crash resulting from a Bear Stearns insolvency. In September 2008, it was reported that Merrill Lynch had lost a total of $51.8 billion in mortgage-backed securities as part of the subprime mortgage crisis. On September 7, 2008, the U.S. government deprivatized Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, taking responsibility for managing over $5 trillion in mortgages. On September 15, 2008, Bank of America announced an agreement to purchase Merrill Lynch in a transaction worth about $50 billion U.S. By this time, the ripple effects of the subprime mortgage crisis spread into the global financial system and into other areas of the economy. Ultimately, this would cause the global financial crisis of 2008.